Welcome back, nerds and nerdettes. It's a little bit of a shorter one, but we do need to finish out the left-hand wing and show all four motors turning. Uh, starting out, obviously very easy. We are painting the flap with just the zinc chromate color primer. Uh, just gives it a little bit of extra detail, a little bit of extra character. The HKM kit... Actually, let me back up real quick. If you haven't watched episode 7 with the HKM showing the right hand wing build up and the electronics installation stop now go back and watch that then like and subscribe <laughs> um, and come back to this video so the HKM molding as I mentioned has a convenient spot at the wing root where it protrudes just in front of the aft cockpit bulkhead and that allows you to sneak wiring through the wing root, underneath the cockpit floor, you can kind of see it from the bombardier's position if you're looking way back through the bombardier and the, uh, the navigator's area. Uh, you'll be able to see the wiring sticking through there, but it's way back there. It's through a little small doorway, so not a big concern. Uh, but anyway, it allows you to tuck the wiring through without inter interrupting the bomb bay, and you can get it from one wing to the next. So all the electronics that control the entire model here are in the right-hand wing, as you saw in episode 7. The left-hand wing is kind of parasitic, right? So it, everything on the left-hand wing, wing is fed by power and control from the, from the right-hand side. Uh, so, uh, really convenient, really nice that that feature is, is in the kit and really helps keep the quality of the internal part of the kit high. Uh, I will say that there is a little bit of a fit problem going on due to the wiring through the fuselage. Uh, working on that now, but that'll be uh, a topic for later. The left hand wing has another landing light and obviously the two, the two electrical motors. Uh, that's about it. And at this phase of the build, I've kind of gone outside of the instruction sequence and I'm attaching the wings prematurely. The difficulty there is that at this point, several of the guns are already installed throughout the fuselage through the uh, through the cheek turret positions, which, although I won't show the installation of the nose, by the end of this video you will see that the, the nose structure is attached. Um, so there are guns sticking out of the cheek positions, there's guns sticking out of the top of the, uh, the top of the fuselage in the crude compartment, and then obviously we have the waste guns that we installed in one of the previous sections as well. I have unfortunately broken those off a couple of times, and it's a problem. Uh, thankfully, the the Cheyenne, the Cheyenne turret aftermarket parts that I bought did come with uh, with aftermarket gun barrels, so I do have some spares, uh, which I have had to employ here. So consider that your warning. Uh, on screen now, you can see some of my electrical calculations. So. I'm just kind of running over how I size the resistor. You'll see me measure the the actual resistance of the resistor I'm using, which was advertised at 47 ohms. Uh, so went ahead and, and double checked that just to make sure we weren't going to burn out our LEDs. And, and up on the screen, I'll show the math for uh, just double checking to what our actual circuit and current is going to look like. Uh, there are a number of holes that need to be drilled, as with the right-hand wing, we need to drill through the firewalls for the for the wiring for the engines to go through, and then drill through the landing gear bay bulkheads just to get access to the top of where the air induction uh, pipe is, and that lets us sneak the wiring in a, in a way that it can't be seen from the landing gear bay all the way through into the wing where we can then solder it to the wiring coming through the fuselage from the right-hand wing. So that, uh, that covers us pretty nicely. Uh, you know, regular warning about solder. You know, kids, if you're here and you're doing something like this, pay attention. And adults, for that matter, uh, you guys too, as Bill and I would say, safety glasses on. <laughs> you need to be wearing and make sure you're covering your PPE. Uh, solder frequently has lead in it. You don't want to be breathing that. It's harmful for your lungs. You only get one set of those that are uh, genetically yours. So... Make sure you're taking care of them, uh, well-ventilated area, respirator if you need, um, or get, you know, silver solder which doesn't have any lead in it. Uh, either way, make sure you're protecting yourself if you're doing electrical wiring in a confined space, 
uh, and and you know take care of yourself, guys. It's important. Uh, so anyway, we've got uh, one set of wires for the for engine number one, one set of wires for engine number two, and of course we've got the wiring for the landing light. I will do a deeper dive moving forward here into. I'm going to go through the coding. Uh, and do a short video on that to really explain how all the code works. I did reference it in the previous episode. Uh, again, good point for you to go back and look at that episode if you haven't already and get caught up. Uh, there's a Reddit post attached to the video description that includes all of my code for the Arduino. You know, free of charge. Go nuts. If you're going to do this, uh, I personally want to help you with it. So. Go ahead and copy that code across to your Arduino suite, and you can go ahead and straight upload it as long as your Arduino is wired the same way that mine is. And uh, I'll explain that in that little shorter episode that I do here in the near future. Once all the wiring is attached, uh, it's time to put the wing together. So the left-hand wing I built from the, from the bottom side up rather than the top side down, as I did with the right-hand wing, which turned out to be a pain in the butt. So the HKM moldings do have quite a few locating tabs, which is really nice, really convenient. And building the wing from the bottom side up let me align the landing gear bay a lot easier than I had, or than the challenges I had on the right hand wing that I didn't really show too much of. But uh, I did have an issue getting those, or getting the right hand landing gear bay to align correctly with its locating features uh, so that I can glue it in place and if it doesn't align correctly, it prevents the wing from fully going together. So it is very obvious if, if you do it wrong, unfortunately. Uh, I would recommend a seri I'd recommend you go slow with this wing, honestly, putting it together. Glue some small, small areas and then start working through the areas that are not glued. Uh, that way you, you know, if, unless you have enough clamps to clamp the entire wing together solidly without any issues and you get it exactly perfect, you know, that is an option too, but I, I'm not in that situation. So my recommendation is to glue and cement the locking tabs and then start working around the outer mold line of the wing just to get rid of the gaps and, and make sure it's really glued together firmly. And then obviously we'll need to do some gap filling before paint. Similar to the Ravel kit, the wings uh, are detachable, so they, they just slide over a locking tab and then slide aft. Uh, the Ravel kit works in a relatively similar way as we'll see here in a couple of episodes time. Uh, I need to get this kit off the bench before I can really get continuing on with the HK or with the Ravel kit and, and go through the same evolution. And for those that remember the previous episode, you will remember my fury at attaching the landing gear assembly into the HKM. It's not any fault of the HKM kit, I will say. It's just, this is finicky, it's difficult, it make you see red, and it's, it's just a challenge. You know, you can see me kind of fumbling. Eventually I do get out two sets of needle nose, uh, needle nose tweezers, and uh, I am able to get it into position and get it glued. However, in my work with the rest of the aircraft, I have actually broken off the right hand wing uh, over center locking down lock uh, link. And so I need to go back and reattach it now. So I'm, I'm in for doing this a third time. The motors, we just cement those in the same way we did with the right hand wing. Uh, not a big deal there. I will mention at this point that the propellers are not solidly attached to the model yet, and I have not gone back and painted the reduction gearbox at the front of the engine. Uh, I guess that would be my little engineering dump for this time. Uh, the reduction gearbox is kind of the protrusion at the center front of the motor. On the actual engines, you know, in the real life Wright 1820s and every other radial engine for that matter, the engine turns faster than the propeller does. Uh, this is good for efficiency, it's good for torque, it's good, well, it's good for overall power, not necessarily torque. Uh, but these propeller blades each weigh over 100 pounds, so we do need quite a bit of force to sling them around. So having a reduction gearbox that gets the, lets the engine turn a little bit faster, a little bit more efficient in the power band, and uh, allows us to spin that propeller quickly is, is, ad, is advantageous, essentially. Um, so the reduction gearbox does protrude at the front of the engine, and... Uh, it does need to be painted gray. My research on Texas Raiders has revealed that. 
I haven't don't have a very good uh, close up picture of that engine, but from what I have seen from a distance, it's it's gray. So as I noted, mentioned, the propellers aren't solidly attached at this point, so enjoy a lovely uh, propeller departure from engine two here as it flies across the room. <laughs> um, yeah, it's just a minor little issue, uh, but running it through the second time filming it was it was much more successful. Uh, and the, the coding for the Arduino, all the propellers and all the motors are essentially run to the same speed parameters. There's a little bit of variation between each, that's going to be normal. Uh, there's some variations in the windings, you know, if you need a lecture on chaos theory, go watch the original Jurassic Park and pay attention to Ian Malcolm, he'll, he'll do it for you. Uh, so there's some slight, uh, some slight variation between the motors, but they're also, you know, they haven't been run the same amount, so there's some run in there as they get their bearings run in, and the friction decreases, uh, and then each of the propellers weighs a different amount. The propellers are vibrating because they're not solidly attached at this point. They're not balanced. Uh, so not uh, overly surprising, to be honest. So things that I'll be working on here in the future. I will say uh, seeing the model turn all four engines is very satisfying. So I uh, hope it is to you as well and that you've enjoyed, enjoyed this episode. As I mentioned earlier, if you have enjoyed this episode and you're still with me, Consider liking, subscribing. I am trying to grow this channel, and it would very much help. I'd appreciate it. And uh, if you want to say hi, drop me your comment, and uh, or tell me a story, or give me your feedback. I'm I'm always interested to the to listen to to the viewers. Anyway, thanks for hanging around, and we'll see you in the next one.